Um, again, we have Professor Sun Jia Sui. She's uh, our old friend, as you probably heard the introduction uh, a few days ago, uh, given by David. He was, I don't know why he made faces. Uh, sorry. Um, I think you probably know uh, uh, Professor Sun's uh, uh, work because she's really uh, quite active in the media uh, studies and also in the past few years she really uh, focusing on indigenous uh, medias. So this is um, one particular lecture she actually uh, presented uh, to, to contribute to our publication project. This is some, something that's uh, tailor-made for, for the Shenyi project. So this is quite a different uh, topic from her usual thing, but um, you can see, again, because she's such a, an expert in the media studies, she presented her uh, presentation with loads of multimedia uh, presentation here, so you will be totally entertained as well as informed. So let us put our hands together and welcome her com uh, coming back. Okay, thank you. I'm going to present for this session is Indigenous Media Used as a Means of Cultural Change in a Period of Transformation of Cultural Society in Taiwan. So uh, I will, I will, I'm going to uh, put, uh, look at the media in a social and cultural context. And I, uh, I will have an overview of the Indigenous Media in Taiwan first, and then focus on two different perspectives. One is about uh, cultural sustainability and the youth audience. And the second one is about cultural creative industry. So you are going to look at two different sides of the media. Uh, indigenous media can convey significant cultural and social meanings to Taiwan. The aim of this talk is to show different cultural forms of indigenous media in Taiwan and investigate roles which indigenous media take in the changing cultural and social context in Taiwan. Indigenous media also feel the connection between the indigenous culture and the wide world. In the cultural policy uh, aspect, indigenous media not only uh, keep tradition, also enhance opportunity for creating possibility for further facilitating different cultural forms, such as indigenous music and indigenous craft. So later I will talk more about the music one, because uh, uh, the radio part actually uh, provide a good channel for a lot of indigenous music to uh, reach wider audience. When indigenous society encounter changes, indigenous media become an important cultural and social means to engage with indi uh, indigenous social movement, cultural changes, and maintenance of indigenous language. So this talk also explore representation of different indigenous media forms and reveal cultural translation among different indigenous culture in, in indigenous and language in Taiwan. By taking overview of the development of indigenous media in Taiwan, this talk is able to analyze and ex explain ways in which indigenous media strengthen the identity of indigenous people, show the cultural heritage of tribes, help to maintain indigenous language, and also become public sphere for debating about indigenous issues. So here I'm going to give the overview. Uh, when people talking about indigenous media, first of, first of all, we are thinking about in, uh, Taiwan indigenous television news. Okay, so uh, I'm going to, uh, so for the pre-media one, indigenous perspectives, that's by monthly magazine. But I think the first one is more influential because there are more people looking at the television one. And the radio, uh, the special one of radio is because some program actually is all designed by indigenous language. So it's not, you, uh, the program is not uh, spoken by Chinese, but spoken in their own language. And also a lot of music one. Uh, right now I think I have a lot of young people use their own language, but produce some. And this is a very good channel for them to let the people understand the music and also get know more about uh, its content or uh, what kind of social issue involved with the music. And uh, new media, uh, 
and social media, they are very diverse uh, media forms actually connected through internet. Uh, I think more than one people's paper actually mentioned about this, like they are learning language, but they have different community through internet and connect with each other, like Saixia. Saixia actually they design app and through internet, they are many words, sometimes they don't know how to say it in a correct way. So in the, in the forum, on the, on the internet, they can discuss with it, or sometimes they find a pro, uh, problem, and then they seek with uh, uh, the elder people to find what is the right way to uh, express the certain issues. And they also build certain kind of identity through social media. So internet plays an important role in the modern tribe because it also connects with uh, young people and elder people through new media forum. Uh, so I'm going to talking about the indigenous television news and indigenous knowledge and they are cultural sen uh, sustainability and youth audience. So there are four uh, main points. First one, to investigate the ways in which indigenous television news convey and transform indigenous knowledge in Taiwan. The second one is presenter acting as cultural agent, translate and adapt news from different ethnic and cultural backgrounds. And the third one, Indigenous presenters not only translate news from different languages, but also translate across different cultural space. And the final one is about youth audience. So, three focus, Indigenous television news, media culture workers, and young audience. The methodology, I use content analysis of news program in Indigenous news, I also interviews of presenters and also do the audience research for undergraduate students. Uh, indigenous television news has become part of the education system to sustain indigenous cultural language and indigenous knowledge to benefit the young generation. With social change, many young indigenous people actually grow up in cities and do not have opportunity to learn their own native language. Therefore, it becomes a difficult language choice for the, produce, for the producer of the news when producing indigenous news. I think it's not only happening in indigenous news, sometimes also happening in Hakka. Sometimes the producer feel they actually try hard to do good news, but not so many audience really see them. And when I do an interview, actually I ask many presenters and anchors and check whether their children can understand their own language. But even their children sometimes wouldn't speak. Yeah, because they are in a good position, so they stay in the city. So that's, that's why the children also couldn't. They are, they are grow up in the city. It's more like Han children, not like indigenous uh, people. But if indigenous news and program only making news for elder people, when they are getting older, who, are, who will become the audience to looking at all of those news? So right now, uh, it's kind of uh, important for the people to uh, find a way to train the young people also can uh, uh, get to know their own language. So later they, they actually have some children program start to use indigenous language teaching system to uh, let them can get access with their own culture. Indigenous knowledge, cultural uh, sustainability and use audience. There are different indigenous languages in Taiwan and to cope with this range of indigenous TV news, broadcasters have anchored with different indigenous language backgrounds to produce news from a number of ethnic groups. However, there are debates when selecting which subtitle to use. Most people in Taiwan can understand television news by the subtitle, even though they cannot understand indigenous language. Other people insist that indigenous television news should not only report in indigenous language, the subtitle should use Roman spelling to make it fit well to the spoken form and sound like an indigenous language. Many indigenous television news anchor ori originally work as indigenous language teachers or priests. They are the very few people who retain the ability to speak an indigenous language and can rep report for the public. Most of them are over 50 years old of age. That's, I think some, uh, someone asked me in the last talk why they are not the young people, 
that's why because they are language teacher or they are priest, so they know how to use. But the younger people they haven't have this ab uh, ability to report it. And these are the re reception from the young audience. When I saw the old anchor's report of news with my own language, I could sympathize with him. The anchor was from my village and more than 80 years old. He does not enjoy good health, but continue reporting a desire to sustain our language. It makes me feel I should learn my language well, so the young generation can take over to sustain the culture and language. This is one response. And here's another one. I feel that anchors are too old, and I do not understand the language. So I tend to switch to other channels with the young anchors who use language which I can understand. So you see different perspective. Indigenous news often report news about problems of indigenous issues, which makes me feel hopeless. Most of the people who appear in the news are farmers, workers, or working classes people. They are not people who work in office. It made me feel that most of the indigenous people cannot find a good job in their village, so need to go far to find better jobs. I think the indigenous television should report more positive news instead of just <coughs> reporting the news which focuses on problems of indigenous issues. The news is a bit too heavy, showing news with all kinds of problems. And I think this one also echoed the previous uh, talk, talking about many people actually couldn't find a proper job. But if you keep showing the problems, uh, for the audience, he looking at the news, it didn't really like encourage them to do something good. So I think later this opinion also, uh, they also, uh, care about this one and put more positive news with that. Young audience perspective also points out that indigenous news should report about more modern issues. It is essential for a reporter to try and report traditional issues in a modern form and link with modern issues. So I think if everything is traditional, sometimes it's hard to attract young people because they feel that's something too old and hard to connect with. Their, their own life. And also the music is not only the traditional one, they also need to combine with some modern music or modern uh, design. So um, more and more people would like to see all of the news and learn from it. Um, media and space. Uh, Craig, talking about literature become a means to create cultural space for consumers. So radio drama and everyday life, uh, phone belief and common value and binding image community. Radio drama as a media space uh, in, interacted with society in the UK and also I think the uh, media in Taiwan can also do the same thing. The anchor of Banu, uh, when indigenous ethnic group, indigenous language news, uh, this one, give an example to show how indigenous television news convey and sustain indigenous cultural knowledge by reporting news about Forest Museum in Taidong, he utilized ways in which indigenous elders introduced the wisdom of mountains to emphasize the value of Banum, places upon presenting nature to young people. It's more like an environmental education in an indigenous way. And right now, actually, it's quite popular. A lot of like tourism uh, designed in this way. They guide, I, I think many people from Hong Kong and, and different parts of the world actually they they find the news first and then just go to the village and they are elder people teaching them how to cook in the original way and introduce the uh, the environment uh, environmental issues with them so it's more and more uh, connection through the news to combine with different connection but no more living in mountain regions develop indigenous knowledge to interact with nature the elder introduce the Banun indigenous knowledge through the news report. Uh, they also teach them how to use the knife because the knife can use different way uh, to not only cut the tree, also find the road. So there are a lot of indigenous knowledge actually content uh, in, uh, in the news. Train young people how to stay in accom accommodation uh, without electricity. Yeah, so many people actually they like to see all kinds of those news and learn something new and later they, they can also go to the tribe to experience about it. Work in different ways when in mountains region to ensure they will not destroy the environment. 
So they are a lot of education also involved with that. The Bengali indigenous news also report upon the choir at the beginning of the festival. The singer usually sing uh, early in the morning, between 3 and 5 a.m., because it is very quiet. We enable the choir to sing in a peaceful space, in a humble manner. So the singing can be here and convey to God. Then God will give permission for the star of the festival. It addresses the relationship of Banun tribe, heaven, and land. It shows the humble way of Banun people to God and nature. So it's, the news is not only a news, it also has a lot of value, original from the tribe, through news, and to let people understand uh, indigenous knowledge. Many presenters in indigenous television news encounter problems when reporting news and events about which local village people may not be able to understand or even issues which did not exist in the local cultural concept. They not only report the news but also become the cultural translator of different cultural boundaries through the reporting process. Example from Sakinu, one time Taiwan anchor man in indigenous uh, Taiwan ethnic TV news. The waste from nuclear power generating plants become an important issue in Taiwan. Some people are closely linked with the issue because the waste from nuclear power generation may be located in their village. So that's why I just see the news and that's why they go for demonstration. So media actually take part in the social participation in Taiwan and respond in indigenous people's opinion. Difficult for the anchor to report this kind of news in indigenous language because there's no words in the indigenous language to describe the chemistry of the West. Some indigenous people may believe the West to be an evil spirit. That's how they transform, use different concepts to describe it. To use words which indigenous people can understand when we pull the news so everybody can get a sense about what it is. The anchor must bridge indigenous life to the modern world and at the same time transform indigenous knowledge to embrace modern issues in reporting news. The anchor must be aware of modern issues uh, but also be familiar with indigenous knowledge. Not only do social, change, uh, social issues need to be translated and explained to indigenous people, cultural sustainability must also be conveyed to the young audience to help them protect their homeland and the indigenous way they interact with nature. So, the conclusion for this part, put different sub subtitles with the same news, news content and show in different time uh, for audience to choose. Introduce new vocabulary in the news with modern issues. Presenters for indigenous news to be successful in its goal to sustain indigenous culture. It is, it is essential for a reporter to try and report traditional issues in a modern form and link with modern issues. Minority media can be a tool to seek for social justice, and that's the one, uh, like the hunting one, because it really caused a big, uh, huge attention, and actually a lot of law people actually try to uh, involve with indige indigenous uh, lawyer to make some change for to make the justice for the indigenous people. Indigenous news should have more positive reports to inspire the young generation and enhance their ethnic competence. Presenters become the cultural translator of different cultural boundaries through a reporting process and sustain culture. Uh, and I'm going to skip this one. <laughs> and the second part is impact of media on indigenous Taiwanese literature. Uh, example from a publishing and creative industry. And I think this one is also about a story, but it's in indigenous way. Uh, so there are four, four points. First one, the impact of new technology, its effect upon the development of the publishing industry, and its link to the indigenous and Taiwanese literature. Second one, the connection between indigenous and Taiwanese literature, publishing, and cultural creative industry. And the third one, media space and cultural landscape. How the contents of a book can be transformed into different cultural forms, cultural products, different media forms, and linked to a change of cultural landscape. And the final one, cultural development through indigenous and Taiwanese literature. And what I'm trying to say is, media is not, is not only media. Media can connect with different ones. It may probably just start from a story. 
but later it can become different of media form and also interact with different society and network and from uh, not only uh, in bring the impact uh, within the nation also can go to wider uh, audience. This talk regards publishing as one kind of media and explore indigenous and Taiwan literature in the framework of media culture and society with the development of new technology and the cultural policy of promoting cultural creative industry. Indigenous and Taiwanese literature has become transformed to different media forms to interact with uh, Taiwanese culture and society. Taiwanese literature has been regarded as a concept of text in this talk and its role of mainstream perspective. People assess Taiwanese literature through different media forms. The media impact of Taiwanese literature when transformed to different media forms connect with different social issues such as indigenous movement, cultural imagination, transform stories to interact with history, local cultural landscape, and media space to connect with local people and form ne network. So this, this talk will deal with some of opportunities and challenges that the Taiwanese publishing industry is come from in the transition uh, from a domain, uh, domain printed media to an increasing digital media form. Uh, I think I just show you some what we talk about. Okay, now this is a, a, a story, a Princess Balloon. So you can see a lot of Okay, so this so is, is a, a novel, is it? Or? Uh, it's, it's more like a legend. Oh, okay. Legend oh. of an indigenous story. And from the legend, there are also um, different kind of music. And this is one, uh, one way of uh, like transformation from a story to the media form. And this is the second one. This is a, a Daya story. They are tracing the sound, so you can see uh, this one, and and this is Santa Cruz Ballet. So you can also, it is not only movie. They are also a different kind of like the painting involved with it, and this is a TV drama talking about Wu She event. That's a very important history event, and. Uh, it becomes a television news. And all of these persons, they are indigenous people. So it's not only elder people, also young people participate in it. So from the production process, many people just uh, take part in with the production. And also there are uh, a lot of wider influence uh, to reach uh, different, uh, different kind of ethnic, ethnic group. So this is the book version, and the painting actually uh, with many some detail to explain why is that. So they are also contain some indigenous indigenous knowledge with that. And this is Mona Luda, the story with the important people in indigenous history. This is all uh, different version of Wu She event. And this is a very famous painter to paint all of those story. And this is hair hunting. Yeah. And this is uh, a musical uh, address about an, a doctor in Zhou, Ali San Zhou Zhu. And the story also become musical and show in different places. And I'm going to show you some. This is uh, Taiwanese literature, but I think indigenous uh, literature also can do something similar. This is Lai He. And Lai He's story also linked with different cultural landscape, like the museum. And this is uh, music. And this is like the walk. Different people can walk through it. 
So literature and cultural landscape. The landscape embodies a cultural imagination of literature, and literature reshapes cultural landscape. Media representation and cultural heritage renovation. It's only that that's not only related with Taiwanese uh, literature, also can involve with a lot of indigenous language. So it uh, it's like liter literary park guided tour, literary uh, literature camp, building connection with everyday life and people. So you can see media just a starting point to connect with different kind of social network. And Zhong Yihe, this is another example from Hong Kong. So uh, from a story, and then you can go to the real landscape, and then uh, there are museum and different uh, exhibition with that. Okay, so this is uh, okay. So. Uh, and cultural landscape. Uh, it's strengthen local community and connect local network, cultural space of cultural communication, and connect the story also in local landscape. New cultural map and cultural imagination actually really mapping the landscape in different ways through different story. From Taiwanese literature publishing to media space and cultural landscape. Uh, Literary space and a connection with cultural society and new media nation for Aboriginal people. So that's another way I'm trying to address. Story can be a starting point, and then it can become different kind of media form to link with a different kind of social network. And it's not only uh, to strengthen the uh, uh, cultural identity, it also can bring different kind of networks through different kind of media form. The transformation of the stories connect the identity, cultural preservation, then cultural network. Uh, for example, like the museum one, Suming is a good example because a lot of because of here. And then all of those then people just start to uh, love indigenous music. And I think he, his music also cooperate not only with different media form, also with the group from different uh, country. For example, I. I attend one concert in National Music Hall. Actually, he's in, he used indigenous music to cope with Okinawa music. So there are a lot of uh, mixing uh, music. Uh, it's not only the traditional one. It also mixing with many uh, you know um, new new way of uh, possibility. And uh, the awareness of the dan uh, danger, the literature transform media has been used for different purposes, but away from their original meaning and intent. That's why yesterday, uh, when Dale talking about some indigenous film, I think the story is, uh, it, it's not only story itself, it shouldn't be like another kind of um, Disney or Hollywood, just with the skin of mm -hmm. indigenous um, factors. I think it's important to know of indigenous knowledge and value and to create something new but with uh, indigenous spirit in it. And that's uh, an important uh, factor for the media when they are trying to show in the indigenous news or when they do some different uh, creation. I think uh, it's not, it's not, uh, in, Indigenous, everything, if they contain something with indigenous factor, not necessarily means that's indigenous. I think it's important to have something um, more sophisticated and contain the value with all of those media form. And then uh, indigenous media can pre become an a important platform to connect with different things, no matter culturally or socially, and then can make some change. Uh, in Taiwan society, and uh, also it can be become a platform to link globally in different ways. Okay, that's my talk. Okay, I have two questions, but it's really um, quite interesting to see how you divide the talk into two parts. On the one hand, you are tackling the uh, uh, really about 
indigenous news and in basically in in a broadcast in uh, indigenous TV station, right? The next one is more uh, a, a more general mapping about the cultural landscape. So my question for you is first um, uh, is there's a very clear general general sorry generational a uh, specific uh, sort of uh, content and media. For example, radio seem to target on more elderly because they have to speak in indigenous languages, but blog, online thing is much more uh, younger people's uh, uh, media. How are you going to, what, what, what are their strategies to attract uh, uh, indigenous people across the board? Are there any kind of strategies they, uh, um, you know, they use to really uh, expand and outreach to different uh, you know, conventional uh, groups. Another thing is to do with, you, you said young people seem to be complaining about, uh, uh, it's always talking about problems. So if there's always, then you said, oh, maybe we should be more encouraging, talking about nice things. But you are from journalism background as well as me. So you're not encouraged, and Xiaowen as well, you're not uh, encouraged to just, uh, gloss over things. So how are you uh, going to provide a certain kind of strategies to, on the one hand, really truthful to, to what's going on, but uh, on the other hand, you know, how are you going to encourage people to aim for a better things? Mm. Okay, thank okay. you. Uh, for the first question, um, I think the audience are very diverse. So let's find, for example, the, they design different kind of news. Like for the elder one, they have the uh, indigenous television news. That means they use their own language. But for the young generation, they have daily news. And that's why they use uh, Chinese title with that, so they can reach different audience. And on the internet, actually, the age group, different age group, they all use internet to form different kind of community and discuss something different. For example, like social movement one, right? quite a lot of young people, they have uh, like the internet group and participant in it through the internet. But also there are elder people, they probably participate for the social movement even 40 years ago. So two groups probably have different strategy to target about the nuclear power waste, but they all use the internet to connect with different way. It's not only one answer and or one way to participate with the social movement. So they are different group of people with different age, but they all use new media to discussion or to provide different strategy. And also a language one, um, because people are interested with different things. So they all have different kind of group, for example, like language one, or like, like uh, they use internet to sell the product uh, or upgrade for, for, uh, for the tribe. And there are also young people. Right now, um, they are also like new farmer. They are actually with uh, new technology skill, and, but they use different way to grow plants and to market them or invite people to go to the go to the tribe or they design different kind of uh, tourism but it's a more they put a lot of indigenous concept or knowledge with that but they also need the help of elder people because they are kind of the uh, can contain all of those wisdom so internet become one way to bridge different age group and also invite people to join them in a new way. So that's for the first one. And for the second one, um, I think later they still address the problem, but they also provide the possibility to solving it. So it's not only address the problem, they will also provide different ways or become a forward to let people uh, pay attention about the issue, but also try to solve the problem. 
So in that way, it's not the problem is just the beginning. And then later, they will follow up with how to solve this problem. For example, like if they are people, they did not have get a good job in the tribe. In what ways they can they can uh, build a new connection with that? Or they are um, a lot of uh, social harassment in the tribe sometimes. And in what ways you can improve such kind of situation? So it's not only the problem itself. Later they have a discussion with that. So it's not only the negative part. Mm, okay, sure. Uh, originally, I, I would like to have Xiao Wen's question, but uh, since this being already being handed to you, <laughs> sorry about that. I'm sorry. Yeah. Um, uh, I'm very interested in the uh, last part. Uh, like last year, I went to the Light Literature Festival in in Zhangha City. Like I, I think like the thing they they did they achieve is luckily is uh like her memory memory hole is in the Zhanghua city, mm. one of like with the most population of Zhanghua County. Mm. So if if we want to have uh these stories as a kind of culture map or like uh, those photos like what we did to like her and what we did to the trip. So first first question is how to make people to be there, like the traffic issue. Yeah. So if we have a, a culture map on the mountains, how to make the people into the mountains? Yeah. And second, about the translation problem. Like because those stories are not original written in Chinese. So will it happen like when you do some translation? How to just just like in the in the TV channel? If you do a translation, how to respect the trip language? In, yeah, it, sometimes the some problem will happen in translation. Yeah, and the final part I think one of the most important thing part is who can raise the fund? Like, <laughs> yeah, the money issue. Yeah, so who can suppose these stories as? Become a kind of cultural industry of village. Okay, yeah. thank you. Uh, for the first one, actually, um, right now many um uh, many tribe they actually have special festival every year. For example, I know Sumin actually also participate one in uh for for Amin's music festival, and it's in the mountain. But normally the uh indigenous television news will broadcasting about the time and place and they sell the ticket. So actually quite it sell sell very quickly because there are a lot of fans, they like the music, they like to participate uh, with the events and if uh, and they also have a transportation arranged with that. So I think it's they are the whole program has been uh, arranged in the proper way. And they connect with the news, or they have program to uh, to uh, introduce different kind of events. And sometimes not only uh, the tribal culture itself. Sometimes they also invite uh, the singer or the uh, the um, the artist from outside. And also they are showing the film. Not only within one one tribe. Sometimes they are different tribe connect together. So people actually tour in the whole Taiwan in different tribes. So I think it attracts people in different ways because they are different kind of art form and different connection. It's more like a festival but in a uh, link with indigenous culture. So uh, people participate in it uh, through different ways. So I think for the transportation one right now they do uh, put it in a more modern form. And the second one, for the translation, um, first of all, sometimes people don't care about the language. Because even you don't know language, if you sing the song, you don't know language, you still can enjoy the song. And there are many art forms, you don't need the language. You know how, you see how people make all of those art craft. So it still attracts people, not necessarily use the language. But in terms of uh, literature, I think right now many people actually would like to. It's like Disney. This, like, it, people speak English, not 
they use all the content, the stories from global, it's not only from one language, but you can adapt low story to different kind of language, but the most important thing is how do you speak this, in, this story in a different way with modern concept. And that's the one, indigenous story or indigenous legend also can be tapped in, in this global world and to connect with its wider uh, audience. Do you answer all of your questions? Money. <laughs> oh, the funding one. Sometimes the festival sell the ticket so so they can they don't need uh sometimes government will support and sometimes they are also some tribe they actually don't like to raise the money because they want to keep their original way once they have uh they have people support and then they econo yeah, the e economic and political power maybe influence um uh, how can they control the whole events and some, so sometimes some tribe they, they prefer just there are a lot of volunteers they can use. Yeah. So when you you like that kind of culture and then you will just go and do it. And uh, tribal people sometimes do many things together. It's more like community sense. So it's not necessarily about money, but people organize it, probably just they like it, so they do it. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you for your uh, lecture message. Uh, my question is because um, the indigenous uh, people has many different tribes. But from your uh, lecture, we or, or we always say indigenous people yes. and media. So I'm wondering uh, the different tribe, a different language, different culture, different uh, background. Uh, how to um, in in your research? How to, is the, yeah, so, or to clarify or to uh, compare with each other or compete with each other. Uh, I, this is the first question. And second question is, because actually um, uh, uh, the, the government uh, put a lot of resources on indigenous culture and education, like Donghua University, mm -hmm. your students um, uh, are almost quite pri privileged mm -hmm. <laughs> position in the, in, uh, even more produced than uh, the uh, normal students. Like, normal? Yeah, yeah, we, we are normal <laughs> students. <laughs> Sorry, we are normal students. <laughs> okay, yeah, they, 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 should, they, they get, almost get job guarantee, some mm -hmm. students. And also, the, recently, the PDS get the biggest uh, budget to make the, the TV program. Mm -hmm. Sorry, I suddenly forgot <laughs> the, the, the TV program the name. On program, I only remember the director is Taurian. Oh, like, I know, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh -huh. You mean like a drama? Yeah, 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 TV okay. drama. Recently uh -huh. just start. Uh -huh. And PTS, uh, very, very big. Mm. The, the, the story is uh, uh, from a, a, a metro doctor. He wrote the, the story and talked about how Taiwan, the indigenous people, is the, in the 16th or 17th century to uh, First international in incident to uh, uh, fight with the Westerner to connect. Somebody. So they put a lot of uh, uh, budget and money on this. So uh, I, I so I, I don't know why how, but it's very um, uh, how how to say it? because on the one hand, as you say. Uh, some program is indigenous people do their own from their own uh, perspective the program, but as I said, the PDS, the, the director and the novel the writer, all Han uh, people. So I don't know what's uh, how, how about uh, we said indig indigenous people how to view this? Yeah, and the, sorry. And the third question is, how do you think Banana is campaign in the front of President's office for yeah. so long time? She continues there. Do you mean the how the media deal no, with the media issue. and uh, oh, okay. how indigenous yes. uh, media or people how view this? Yes. Mm. Thank you. Um, first of all, I think when we say indigenous, mm. that means very diverse. Mm. 
indigenous people a different concept. So uh, when you are talking about compete, is that, uh, for example, like news, uh, indigenous news have certain language, uh, at least at least certain language, uh, television news, so they separate uh, different time. For example, Monday is for Amis, Tuesday is for Taiwan, <laughs> Thursday is for Dao, Friday is for like, it's different because it's... But they are not 13 days in a week. <laughs> so one day have different, sometimes oh, lunch time or okay. evening. Oh, okay. Yeah, and also subtitle. Sometimes it's like Amis with Chinese title, for example, five and six, and with indigenous like Roman spelling, it's like seven to eight, for example, like this. So uh, you get to remember your tribe is which day, yeah, and sometimes they are showing it because it's it's unfair if only choose one language, the bigger group. I think for other people, they are not happy with that. And that's not, because it's also important for the in, in indigenous television news to sustain different kind of culture of different kind of language. So let's, uh, there are a lot of debate for years for about how to program this in a proper way. Mm -hmm. But I think that so far they did it. So this one I'm, uh, I'm trying to uh, answer the first one, but also the program because they are different legends, different stories, so they can produce with different kind of media form, like TV drama, or like uh, cartoon, or like animation. So I just show you some example, but there are so many different kinds, and also film, like the uh, documentary film or like the adaptation type of. Of film, so but based on the story of its original legend, so they are different kind of media form, originally from different kind of story from different tribe, so they can, um, we can all see it from the it's indigenous television news is more like a platform, but different kind of producer, different kind of media form, they can all find a place or way to connect with it. So I think that's more like a practical uh, usage right now in the indigenous television news. And what is the third question? About the language dispute, protest. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, the protest. Uh, about how they it's deal with it. By yeah. Yes. Yeah, yeah. I think they just keep, record, keep reporting it. But even indigenous people probably with different point of view is not only one way to thinking about how to demonstrate or how to target this issue. Some people agree with that, some people with some people not. So I think uh, it also depends on the reporter. So they are also different kind of social network engage with this issue and some can be very radical but some prefer in a more peaceful way. But, uh, but I think it's important to have the chance to let different opinion. They are all have possibility to show in the television news or program. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, yeah, I, I was going to ask that same question as, as, as Sharon. That was my, 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 uh, uh, my first question. But my, my other question was about audience. So, uh, who exactly is uh, uh, the indigenous TV station's target audience? Um, to what extent can it also reach uh, hand viewers or, or non-indigenous uh, viewers? Because one of the things that's come up in a lot of the discussion the last three days is misunderstandings, lack of interest, um, or lack of awareness of indigenous issues. So, that leads to the question about how does um, Indigenous uh, media get into mainstream media. Um, so, could you comment, for example, on the relationship between um, Indigenous TV and other media forms, for example, public TV or um, uh, private media? Mm -hmm. um, right now, I think they actually have some exchanging news program or cooperation way. Mm -hmm. So sometimes some indigenous news also they just change the subtitle and they also show in the mainstream television news. Not they only systematically being used or just 
pick and choose. Sorry. Um, both. Because okay. different television programs have different kind of cooperation. Mm. Or sometimes when they see the news, they feel that's important, they also uh, also show in the mainstream one. And also, they are, it's kind of diaspora of the journalists themselves. Because they are a lot, every time when the chairman of indigenous television news change, and there are some reporter will leave. Uh. But sometimes they leave and then they, they just move to the mainstream news. Mm -hmm. So there are some indigenous journalists actually working in the mainstream television. Mm -hmm. They are also producing the news related with indigenous issues. So I think there's different ways. When sometimes it's program exchange itself. Sometimes the people have been trained in indigenous news, later work in the mainstream television news. So uh, there are more and more awareness about indigenous issue in different kind of channel. Yes, yeah. Actually, my question was going to be very, very similar oh, okay. to that. <laughs> Along the lines of, I don't know if this is working, but I hope I'm loud enough, that it almost feels, uh, well, my thing is like um, L1, L2 acquisition, first and second language acquisition, and research shows the two biggest drivers of that are the language being spoken at home, which you kind of touched on, and extensive materials, as we call them, in that language, which would be like the media. And you talked about modernizing it, making, making it more interesting, but also related to uh, David's question, it feels a little tokenizing. Like, here's the mainstream news in Mandarin, and here's your nice little thing in Bunu, and oh, isn't that cute? And how do we mainstreamize that so that it's news for everyone in such a way that we can support language preservation mm -hmm. to make it extensive materials that, you know, that support this? And to what extent do we need to also shift our focus on getting older uh, members of various groups to speak their native languages at home, which is an issue we see across Taiwan, including with Taiwanese in the North, Hakka, people are just not speaking the language to their kids. Mm -hmm. Where do we need to emphasize it, and how far do you think we've come? Mm -hmm. Sorry. Uh, no, no, I don't think <laughs> about the answer. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, um, I think right now the education system is also trying to provide an environment. For example, for indigenous students, uh, they are Right now, um, they are hoping to provide an environment from the family to an elementary school to a university. It's the whole system with indigenous uh, language. I think Maori people has already done it. But right now, they kind of try yeah. to adapt this one to Taiwan. Mm -hmm. But we are not quite sure it will be successful or not. Mm -hmm. And that's also part of the reason you are talking about a lot of budget for the education system. Right now they want to train a lot of like indigenous language teacher. So in my college all of a sudden so many people come to my college and trying to become language teacher. So the more and more people get to know uh, their own language, sometimes they probably can it's more like a small community everywhere in Taiwan. So uh, they can train young people and also provide combine with different kind of media form. So I think the name, the cultural identity actually strengths through all of these uh, efforts, no matter from education, from from marketing or from different cultural product. Let's um, that's how. Although there are also some people debating with that. Mm. Yeah. Um, well, research shows that children, like children that go to language school, even if it's their native language of their culture, mm -hmm. just do not learn the language the same way mm -hmm. as if they've also, they're also speaking it at home. But without the extensive materials of media for them to watch, they're still not going to acquire it. Mm -hmm. So how do we put these all in sync to make that happen? Yeah, but I'm thinking about the example of Seth and Kurt Balai. Yeah. After that movie, I think Zhengzhi University actually have a lot of people start to learn 
There was even a Taipei Times uh, article about it. But I, I went to ask her and she said it was like half a dozen people had expressed interest. How many people do you think learned how to speak it? Probably zero. <laughs> maybe one. Maybe like one dude was really smart. One dude was really smart. Okay. Thanks, Wyatt. Don't wait. Um, Thank you. No, no. He has already queued, and then you. All right. Thanks. Uh, I guess mine is uh, a question or some thoughts based on sure. the, the previous questions. So I'm just thinking that um, when we're talking about indigenous media, um, the issue of definition is, is very important because this, this concept is not something that we can uh, just taken for granted, so we must ask how should we define indigenous media? Is it is, indig is indigenous media some media that is produced by the indigenous people or is it media that is produced for or consumed by the indigenous people or is indigenous media something like the media about um, indigenous people? I think this distinction is that could be really helpful because it can links back to the like different parts of the, 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 the cultural industry, like the production, the consumption, and, and representation, which will be helpful for like a, uh, when we think about like cultural change in terms of a more normative kind of uh, uh, way. Yeah. Okay, thank you for the question. Um, I think this is also an issue a lot of debating is that, but uh, I think right now it's more like Anything related with indigenous issues, uh, if they all including in this concept, because uh, for example, like indigenous arts, some indigenous artists they don't like to be clarified as indigenous artists, mm -hmm. because although his his he he is indigenous people, but he would like to be regarded as like a normal artist. artist. Yeah. He don't like to be clarified as indigenous. But also, they are Han people stay in the tribe more than 20 years. And people just regard them as one of them. And so, how do you define indigenous? It becomes very confusing in some way. And so, if, you, if someone know better, knowledge than the indigenous people, why not he couldn't be regarded as one kind of indigenous people? So what's your definition? <laughs> My definition is if uh, about indigenous media mm -hmm. or sorry. I think if I will not use the uh, identification of in terms of ethnic I will in my because I of course, if someone born as indigenous, he is indigenous. But if someone he do pay attention about indigenous issue and do a lot for indigenous people, I will think he can be he or she can be part of indigenous community. Yeah. But you can't change your ID card. <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah. But you can probably change to Han, because you can't go the other way. <laughs> According to, to yesterday, we were saying how difficult it is to be categorized as uh, indigenous. I think we can ask another question, is like, who is British? Yeah, exactly. It's not only... Who's Taiwanese? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, who is Taiwanese there? Yeah. It's, yeah, let's <laughs> make them of that. Yeah, so indigenous media is not only someone born with indigenous identity, I think if he do in, uh, involve with many indigenous affairs, I think he can be regarded as one of the yeah. indigenous community. Yeah. I'm happy. Yes, uh, I agree with that last comment, but just uh, <laughs> an intersection with the previous uh, questions about the pluralization and how to represent I think including David's comment about what kind of audiences are being catered for. I think one um, position that I would suggest that we need to consider is that when we use audience research within a media framework, we are liable to reproduce the present or formulations of the present because constructing the audience around 
a kind of, you know, what would you like scenario in one form or another, will reproduce institutional representation as it is or has been projected. So uh, to pluralize, particularly within a minority framework, we would need more kind of agencies of representation which come from uh, a more grassroots and organic background. This has been a particular problem in the UK. You know, to this day, we are unable to pluralize our media despite repetitive attempts to do so. And all, all of the attempts that we've had have always reproduced elite formats in minority groupings. And I would imagine that that's something which all of the kind of indigenous uh, communities would be struggling with. Wow. Thank you. I think it must be a comment, right? Do you want to respond to that? I think that's a good comment. <laughs> <laughs> well, on that note, I think, do we have our yes. break? Yes? Oh, oh, maybe we have the time to just take one more and short one, please. Everyone's getting to get some. <laughs> yeah, so uh, thank you for your engaging talk. So uh, we've talked a lot of uh, media, and those are all based on language. So uh, that makes me thinking about how about using media without language. And I'm sure there is at least one possibility, choreography. Yes. And the reason why I think I'm thinking about dance is because um, recently uh, there is an institute called uh, Tsai Rui Dance Research Institute. Uh, it's orchestrating a series of uh, conference which uh, are of course dance centered, but also it invites scholars, priests, uh, poets, uh, filmmakers to give talks in order to preserve uh, cultural identity, historical memories, and also express political discontents. So that makes me thinking about the possibility of using bodies, dance as a platform to express and to uh, preserve these uh, cultural identity. So could it be a possibility? Yeah. Yeah, I think in dance is always important for indigenous culture, and I think the indigenous news also reporting a lot of related issues. And I think for indigenous people, sometimes music and dance also convey a lot of history and and uh, uh, the cultural background with that. So that's why. Uh, in, for example, uh, there's one one news I didn't show you. For example, like uh, Beinan tribe, in the during the let's learn New Year's festival, they dance overnight. But when they dance overnight, is they are showing the whole history. So the dance itself is contain the history. Through dance, they just generation by generation to that the younger people understand their own culture and also the singing. The singing also um, no languages. Yeah, that's no language, but the 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 singing, even the song itself, with a lot of meaning. Like when they do hunting, they have different kind of like different kind of shouting, but those shout different kind of shouting means something different. So people can understand. People, tribal people can understand what. Does that means there's no language at all? But of course, it says a lot for about their culture. And Actually, history. yeah. Sorry. The, uh, we have one more question. Very short. Very short. It's, he promised me. That's yeah, not actually a question. But oh, another comment. A comment <laughs> yeah. and a comment for to to. Uh, sorry, what's your name? Oh, very rude. What's your yeah. name? Yeah. To his uh, comment, uh, I can. Uh, how to say, um, make it more specific and uh, truthy. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, yeah uh, Suming came to Germany, uh, to Berlin, actually, two years ago. And what we have done is picnic, and then we dance in a circle with German people and yeah, Taiwanese fans. And even though we don't understand the language, we have German interpreter and English interpreter at the same time. So, thank yeah, you. Thank you. But actually, Yuan Wuzhe since 1990s, so it's not like only Tsai Rui Yue. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. On that note, thank you so much, and thanks. Uh, uh, you know, fantastic talk again. Thank you.